Here we go, a local derby, a seven-side derby. Bristol City versus Cardiff for the right to win a place in round four in a home tie with Leicester. A game with real meaning on both sides of the seven bridge. Two teams with just eight league places between them. And the fans with keen rivalry between the two clubs. Let's check first of all on the two teams for tonight's game. For the home team, Lewin Nyatanga suspension means Liam Fontaine returns alongside Lewis Carey. At 33, Paul Hartley gets his first taste of the FA Cup, while the goal threat comes from Nicky Maynard, the club's record by 18 months ago. He has 11 goals so far this season. The legs should be fresh. Bristol City's last game was way back on December the 28th here against Watford. And as for Cardiff, they have three changes from Saturday's home draw with Blackpool. Adam Matthews, one of two 17-year-olds in the team. The other, Aaron Wildig, starts for Cardiff for the very first time. Michael Chopra is recalled alongside Ross McCormack. McCormack hit 23 goals last season. He's goalless since April, though. Chopra hasn't scored since September himself. Well, two years ago, Cardiff were FA Cup runners-up. They have won the trophy, of course, themselves way back, though, 1927, the famous win over Arsenal. Well, the snow still falling. The game will at least start. The referee is uh, Darren Deadman, by the way. He could be uh, a key figure as the game and the, uh, the weather progresses. The two teams have met in the league, but in Cardiff this season. And Cardiff won the league meeting by three goals to nil back in August. Just the second league game played at Cardiff's brand-new stadium, that. Aaron Wilbig's first start. And at 17 years of age for Cardiff City, he is their under-18 captain. And there is uh, Darren Dedman, who could not become a, a focal figure as the night wears on. Yeah, they've worked really hard, Bristol City, to get this tie on. They've had the tent over the pitch here at Ashton Gate, and it, they, they'll be really disappointed the fact the snow's coming down like this. It makes it difficult for players, not that they're being soft out there, but it's quite disorientating. Playing in snow could be quite difficult. Obviously, the, the condition, the surface looks fine. It just depends how hard it gets with the uh, freezing temperatures down here in Bristol, and that's obviously what the referee will be keeping his eye on. Yes, they've had a McLeod cover on the pitch. It's been uh, watched by the... Head groundsman here at Craig Richardson, who's done a good job to get the game on. And on the game finished, that's the, uh, the thing to watch. Dave Jones, the manager who led Cardiff to that final two years ago, four and a half years in charge of Cardiff now. And there is uh, Paul Hartley. Michael Chopra recalled alongside Ross McCormack in that uh, front two for Cardiff City tonight. Well, away we go, Cardiff in that uh, change kit of all yellow, not their familiar blue. The prize is a fourth-round tie on Saturday week at home to Leicester City. Another all-championship affair beckons. This is Bradley Orr for Bristol City. And Marvin Elliott. And this is Danny Haynes now. Haynes away from three in yellow, but... Nipping in there is uh, Peter Whittingham, who's had a really good season so far for Cardiff. Yeah, just an amazing start to the season, hasn't he? Just everything he hit seemed to go into the goal. He, he's really been an influential player. Had good quality, always had good quality in that left foot. Never really happened for him at Villa, but he, he's been smashing since he's come down here and a big, big player. As many are out on that pitch here tonight. Yeah, 15 goals for Whittingham so far this season, 13 in the league. Here's Hartley, his first season at south of the border. And he's been dispossessed by Chopra here. Wouldn't quite fall for uh, Gavin Ray there for Cardiff, though. That's Elliott. This is uh, Adam Matthews, who's a very highly sought-after teenage right back. He turns 18 tomorrow, by the way. The uh, number 27 for Cardiff, and if you believe the papers, he's on the uh, wanted list of the likes of Arsenal and... Manchester United as well. 
Wildick. Now Matthews. Now the home team can look to work the ball through here towards Nicky Maynard, and it's uh, played back to David Marshall, former Norwich goalkeeper, in his first season uh, with Cardiff. Only missed uh, four games so far this season, Marshall. And cleared away by uh, Dean Gherkin, the home team's goalkeeper, former Colchester player. Another in his first season in new surroundings. McNaughton throws in. There's Joe Ledley, another player who uh, is rumoured to be on other clubs' wish lists in this transfer window. Yeah, I've got to say, Dave Jones has done a, a super job down there. They've always been competitive for the recent years. He's made some very good signings, a few eyebrows raised when he brings Chopper back for all the money, but he got him a lot of important goals last season and has done this season as well. And, and developing that young talent as well is, is fantastic for a club like Cardiff City. Here's McAllister, hit long looking for Maynard, and there's a shout for handball, which isn't given. Didn't quite fall for McCormack, who was so prolific for Cardiff last season. Well, this campaign has been rather hit by injury so far. Wouldn't quite uh, run there for Nicky Maynard. This is Hudson. Into uh, the feet of Shoffra. And it goes in strong. And here goes Danny Haynes for Bristol City. Haynes with the ball in looking for Nicky Maynard, but slid behind and away there for the game's first corner. Yeah, good defending there. You get yourself into that near post area, block those crosses off. Done exactly the right thing, Haynes, there. On a night like tonight, just put those balls into the box. Make it difficult for defenders turning back, running towards your own goal. Make it tough for goalkeepers having to come out blinded by the snow. Good first real bit of incisive pace down this right-hand side from Bristol City. Paul Hartley on the corner. He won the Scottish FA Cup twice, once with Hearts and once with Celtic. And it's his corner now for the home team. In by Hartley. Good delivery and off the post. It was Lewis Carey who stole in and the... Longest serving player, the captain, and against the frame of Cardiff's goal. Oh, just attacked the ball so well. He's seen it all before and gets himself into good positions. Good delivery as well. Swung in from this right hand side. Just see a little injury down there in front of us now, but good effort from Carey and skipped off off the surface, didn't it? I think there was a man on the post. He probably had it covered, but yeah, good, good play. Lewis Carey made his debut 15 years ago. Tonight is a 560th game for Bristol City. He's just done what he's done best, kicking 17-year-olds. Make sure, make sure you know who's the old man in the team there. No, he's just hit the post and then he goes and kicks the 17-year-old to say, welcome to professional football, son. Yeah, Aaron Wildig's first start for Cardiff. It's a Kevin McNaughton free kick here for Cardiff. In towards Chopra. Turned away by uh, Liam Fontaine for Bristol City. This is uh, Bradley Orr. And now Jamie McAllister. Callister Ford looking here for uh, the head of Cole Skews. This is Nicky Maynard, and the shot might deflect towards Haynes here. Hartley, Danny Haynes. And Haynes again, they peel offside, which isn't given. Danny Haynes will get the cross in too. Can't even have enough bodies and enough muscle there to get the ball clear. This is McCormack. Gavin Ray. Ray into McCormack here, shows good strength to hold the ball off, but in the end there were four red shirts around him. Yeah, have got to credit both teams at the moment. They're both trying to play, not an easy night, as we've already said, in, in many ways. Just watching the players running round, there's a few tottering about more than running about it. It looks quite difficult, conditions underfoot, difficult for um, defenders to turn. We saw Hudson get himself in a, a bit of a mess before, so it's a, it's a night to try and cut out and minimise mistakes. And, and just try and get through the tie as best you can. This is Michael Chopra. Joe Ledley. And Adam Matthews, this uh, teenage prodigy. Tipped to be maybe the next Aaron Ramsey. Yeah, they certainly get spotted quickly when they make themselves into first-team players, and the big clubs soon come sniffing, you know, they know there's going to be big competition for them. And it's difficult for the clubs, once the lads hear about the this information that comes through to them and the interest from the big clubs, it's tough for them to keep going, keep the motivation levels going. And very often the worst things are to go to these big clubs. You know, they, what a great ground for them to, to learn the game. 
and here at Bristol or at Cardiff. Absolutely fantastic experience for 17 year olds to be playing first team football. And here is Adam Matthews. Just one goal so far, but it came from 50 yards a free kick against Watford. This is Nicky Maynard. Squares up Hartley! And Hartley's strike was half decent, but well wide of goal in the end. Should have done better. Another one you can probably put down to the conditions, but he'll be disappointed. Good play from Maynard. Just a little bit bobbling coming into him, but he's got plenty of time. And he's only 16 yards out or so, and that's skewed right away off his foot. But a good chance. He'll be disappointed there because he wasn't under that much pressure in the box. Scored in his debut against Preston back in August. Headed away by uh, David Marshall. Must have been a header looking at his shot there. This now is uh, Bradley Orr for Bristol City. Hartley. And now Lewis Carey. And cleared away by uh, Dean Gherkin. So Carey's chance, the best so far. The header which came back off the post. This is McAllister. Hartley is short. McAllister again. This is Cole Skews. Skews. This now is uh, Bradley Orr, who's well forward. Orr's ball in, looking for Danny Haynes, comes back out here. That's going to bobble away, though, for a throw to Bristol City. David Clarkson couldn't quite take them to control. Yeah, again, just, just didn't look sure-footed, did he? The ball got fired in there, but good play from Bristol City. They're really happy to pass it in this final third. Here's Hartley in that final third. His ball in, and it's too near this time to David Marshall. It is too near, but that's exactly what he should be doing. Fire those balls in on the deck, make it really, really difficult for defenders. Tonight, for own goals and gaffes, this one. Whittingham. And the ball forward, looking for uh, Gavin Ray's run. It's going to deflect away, though, for Cardiff's throw. Cardiff's last away game, by the way. They led 4-0 at Peterborough. And they held to a 4-4 draw. Must have not pleased Mr Jones. No, quite incredible game, wasn't it? I know. Nicky Eden, the assistant manager at Peterborough, who's just gone in there, and he said he was clearing his desk at half-time, and then suddenly by the end, uh, it was all looking a bit rosier, but no-one's ever happy with a 4-4. Matthews. Chopra. And Ledley works it wide here to uh, McNaughton. McNaughton's cross is half away. Didn't quite fall, and... Now the break is on with Clarkson and there's Maynard, here goes Haynes. Marshall able to clear away. Difficult night for goalkeepers too, the surface will not be the easiest to read. No, just horrible, they'll certainly brief the defenders as they should do in any match, do not make your back passes be on target. They give me as much chance as possible and if you're in any doubt, stick it into Rose Ed and we'll argue about it afterwards. Elliot. Hudson for Cardiff, looking to uh, find McCormack. There's Elliot to help it on for Bristol City. This is Cole Skews through to Nicky Maynard, who couldn't quite control the ball as it ran through to him. A bit unlucky, but I think that's where I can see Bristol City getting some real good effect in the game. Maynard with his pace, just running down those channels. Centre halves hate those balls being played between them and, and right backs or left backs, and that's a, a real area that I think Bristol City can exploit tonight. 11 goals so far this campaign for Nicky Maynard. He was their record buy from Crewe a couple of years ago. With just over £2 million. Pounds. Clarkson. Skews. This is Fontaine, whose clearance is half charged down. Elliot, or rather, Harkey is there for Bristol City to find. Uh, Orr here, Orr's ball through, it uh, picks out Danny Haynes who is stopped well by Kevin McNaughton, sliding tackle, and will be a corner though. Dangerous from nights like tonight, making those sorts of tackles, he had to be sure McNaughton did well, showed good pace to get back because Haynes is pretty rapid, certainly over those first five yards or so, got a good foot in McNaughton, and he's just felt his right hamstring there as he's made the tackle as he's lunged in, so certainly a night where you have to make sure those muscles are in good fettle. Well, the last corner saw uh, Lewis Carey hit the post, what can this one produce for Bristol City? It's going to be Hartley again to take it. And the home team have begun on the front foot with 11 and a half minutes gone. 
Hartley's corner whipped in and half away and then the uh, attempt on goal is uh, going to come back out to Hartley. Hartley takes on Wildig who uh, made the challenge, it is a goal kick only. Did very well, Wildig there, got a little bit tricked by the uh, step over, probably didn't particularly expect it from Hartley, not one you'd really expect to produce that sort of trick on you, but got himself back in there. Looked like he made a block for a corner, but just did enough with his body strength. And now he's settled into the game well. He'll obviously have a few uh, butterflies and he'll have his family there for the first time. Big occasion for him. So remember this one. Martin was not there. the best. We'll get a second go here, though. That's better. McCormack on to Chopra, and here's Wildig. Russell's gone, though, as uh, kind of a. Uh, Stopping the traps, a card coming here as well, the first of the game. Darren Dedman's uh, first name to be taken is that of Bradley Orr. Well, they obviously know Wildig's a good player because they've kicked him twice now, haven't they? He's not uh, had a great influence on the game so far, other than to pick himself up uh, probably with six stud marks up his shins. That was a poor tackle, I mean, that's quite late for Moore, he's lucky there. Not particularly high, not particularly malicious, but very poor and far too close to Darren Dedman for that one not to end up in the book. And that's the game's first caution. And kind of here with a McCormack free kick, which he takes it on! And uh, maybe he saw the conditions and saw the goalkeeper's near post was a touch unguarded and chose to go for goal. Yeah, one where he's trying to do him with the eyes and... It can be done, just whipped in there, and as you said, you, it skips up off this surface, hits him on the chest and comes out, and the predatory instincts of the other strikers up there, Chopper's always looking to, Whittingham's always looking to get in there, just never know. April's last goal versus Burnley, uh, Ross McCormack. There's Clarkson, giving away to Wildig, though, and, and Ledley finds McCormack. And it's in strongly with McCormack, Elliott is there, and so is Ledley. Target was in the end, Nicky Maynard. Lewis Carey. Bristol born, only at six months of his career away from here. He had a brief spell with Coventry some six years ago, but uh, soon came back. Gerard back to goalkeeper Marshall. Yeah, it's not really, we need a goal, don't we? It's, it's such a difficult night, you, you can't blame the players for not having a, a great pace about the team. I think they've applied themselves well, and the fact that they've tried to play it in good areas, but it's tough to fashion chances on a night like this. McNaughton, one of the survivors from the FA Cup final team of two years ago for Cardiff. Here's Danny Haynes. Aaron Wildig. Chopra's control was exemplary. Chopra, McCormack. Around the corner, then pulled back, surely, and if that was, uh, it was uh, McAllister, not all, but it's going to be the other fullback who gets a yellow card now as well to join all in the uh, notebook. Yeah, that was cynical, wasn't he? He's just pulled him back. He'd been tricked and just pulled him back, but in these difficult conditions, you don't really want to be carrying yellow cards too early. You've got to be very, very careful. And you slip into someone, might not even be your fault making a tackle, and, and you're going to get another yellow card here. And teams don't want to be going down to ten men. So both full-backs inside the first quarter hour on yellow cards for Bristol City. Yeah, good skill from McCormack, just flicked it over him, just had a little bit too much cuteness, a little bit too much awareness. Yeah, good play. On the last free kick, he went for goal, McCormack. It's going to be, I think, Joe Ledley this time. He scored twice in that 4-4 uh, draw at uh, London Road a couple of weeks ago. His only goals this season. It's going to be Joe Ledley, who goes for goal, and... It's Gherkin save, Chopra shot on the follow-up, is blocked away. And the goalkeeper saves twice, it stays nil-nil. Yeah, good save as well. Got himself down low, couldn't hold it though. We, we already talked about that on the previous free kick, couldn't hold it. And they were certainly first at the rebound as well, Cardiff. Hudson and Matthews. Matthews away from Elliott and Hartley will uh, nip in there for Bristol City. In the middle he's got uh, Nicky Maynard, Hartley, Cole Skews, lost by McAllister. And away come Cardiff now, in the middle Chopra, Whittingham also ahead. Here is Whittingham, it's Peter Whittingham still who goes for goal and it skips away and maybe deflected too from Cardiff's top scorer. 
Well, he's always going to be shooting from there, gives himself half a yard on that left foot of his. We've talked about the quality he's got in it, the goals he's got, the confidence levels that are riding high at the moment, and he's always going to be shooting. Good play, good awareness, nips inside. Just a little deflection to take it wide of that right-hand post. Cardiff were booed off after their one-all draw at home to Blackpool on Saturday in the uh, Championship. They are fourth in the table, though. They are certainly well in contention for at least a playoff position. McCormack's corner then for Cardiff City. In by Ross McCormack, who went the near post for Bristol City. Got to miss that front man. How many times do we see it in professional football where that front man gets hit? All the work you do to create these set piece chances and you hit that first man. Cardiff haven't won here, by the way, for 41 years. 1969, their last minute Ashton Gate. And by uh, McCormack and sent away by the home team. Danny Haynes, looking to uh, combine with Cole Skews, back here with David Marshall, the Cardiff goalkeeper. I think the near side is the uh, side of the pitch which is most affected so far by the conditions. Yeah, it's an interesting one, isn't it? With having the tent on, you, you would expect it to have been clear. Uh, so it is strange that maybe a bit of frost's got under there. Obviously the surfaces are so flat that they're, they're uh, not dangerous at all, but and this snow is starting to settle, certainly. Get the orange ball out, that's what I say. I know this one's yellow, but... Well, here come Cardiff, and it's meant for McNaughton. It's McNaughton here! And also there is Michael Chopra. And I think Chopra is offside, and players call back. Yeah, but it looks... Well, it is offside, but it's certainly a bad mistake, you can't play. Can't play in your own box in these conditions, especially with someone as sharp as Chopra. He's just nicked that off from McNaughton's, nicked it off him in the end. And I, don't, I suppose it was Chopra coming back from that uh, offside position to get himself involved. But credit McNaughton, he didn't give up on it and, uh, and read the trick in the box as well. There's McCormack, it's going to break to uh, McAllister here, though, for Bristol City. Back with Dean Gherkin, who has been the busier goalkeeper so far. Whittingham. And there's Wildig and now Chopra. Chopra does well. Matthews. Whittingham. And Fontaine for Bristol City. Now Hartley. Hartley's ball forward looking for Danny Haynes. He's got great pace on this right hand side, the former Ipswich Town player. Wildig beaten to the ball, and this now is uh, Nicky Maynard, who is pulled back by Ray. Ray with a cast on a broken hand he got to in December. And the home team have a free kick here in a good position. It's a little bit lucky there for me, Ray. I think he does catch his heels, he gives it the old pros trick of, well, I can't do anything, I'm running into him, but Maynard knows exactly what he's doing, runs across him. For me, he's a little bit lucky to get away with that, particularly as the two Bristol City players have already been booked as well. I think he maybe should have gone in the book for that one. Well, Hartley's got uh, four goals so far for his uh, new club. This one is uh, angled in by Hartley and flicked on, and it was again Kerry with a header from the set piece, and this time the goalkeeper able to save. I'm not sure he's meant to be picking him up, Kerry, but they must know of his record. He's been around for long enough, and you can't give players free headers in the box there. Here's Aaron Wildig for Cardiff. Stopped by Bradley Orr. Orr has Haynes close by. Orr's pass, it will reach Cole Skews, and now here come Bristol City. Headed long by McAllister into Nicky Maynard, and here's David Clarkson. Clarkson still might run on for Maynard, and, and then it's half away. This is Marvin Elliott and Danny Haynes for Bristol City. Hey, look, Norton won't take his centre half there. I think it was Hudson played the ball out to him, <laughs> put him in real trouble. He could just swing that left foot more naturally associated with being a right back as well. They're not the balls you want on a night like tonight. Bradley Orr, there was Carey, Cole Skews. Skews claims handball against Ledley, which is not forthcoming from Mr. Deadman. Here's Skews again. And now Shopper can break away with 
room to work in here for Cardiff. Michael Chopra, no goals since September for him. Chopra's ball in, comes off the back of Fontaine. And away come the home team. A bit disappointed from Chopra there, he overran the ball as well, which didn't help him. It didn't really look like he had a belief, did he, running down that left channel. Maynard, jump the challenge. This is Elliot. FA Cup finalist with Millwall six years ago, played right back against Juan Cristiano Ronaldo that day. In Cardiff, of course, at the Millennium Stadium. Here's Maynard. Maynard checks out to Bradley Orr. It's Orr's cross in. Marshall has to watch this and took it cleanly. Yeah, did very well. Looked very comfortable. Been very assured this season as well. Good hands there and not easy conditions, but uh, took that one very well and that will give him a real confidence. Here's Adam Matthews for Peter Whittingham. Whittingham's ball in. That's a loose one given away here to Liam Fontaine for Bristol City. Bradley Orr, Maynard, beaten with a punch by uh, Hudson. And now Cardiff can build through uh, Aaron Wildig, his first start, only 17, not 18 until March. Big night for the Hereford-born Wales Youth International. Here's Whittingham. Midway through the uh, first half and scoreless, the... Uh, FA Cup third round, this tie rearranged after being frozen off here back on the 2nd of January. This is McNaughton for Cardiff. Away from Elliott and into the feet of uh, Joe Ledley. Ledley, another who has been linked with a potential move away. He is out of contract in the summer. Here is Ledley. One or two clubs in the Premier League have uh, been casting eyes towards him. Here's Wildig. Will dig for McCormack, but in nips Lewis Carey. 23 now, Carey, but he's got good legs on him. Carey then with the uh, and then the misplaced pass. Can't be encouraging 33-year-old centre backs to make runs forward like that. What's he thinking? Severe inexperience. Never gonna see 90 minutes out doing things like that. There speaks the voice of experience from uh, Matt Jackson. He used to run into that brick wall on the halfway line and slam the anchors in. It's uh, Orr's throw, and there's Hartley, and now it's Liam Fontaine for Jamie McAllister. McAllister will drive the ball in, looking for Danny Haynes. It comes back out to Elliott. And now Haynes will look to tease and test McNaughton. He's done well, McNaughton, because it's not easy defending, particularly when you have to make tackles with your weaker foot, and he's up against great pace in Haynes. His delivery out of defence hasn't been good, but defensively he's stuck to his task well so far. Bradley Orr. And Orr will get the cross in, and once again it's a test for Marshall, and he hangs on. They yeah, look pretty short again, just patted that one down, but once they're coming, the goalkeepers on a night like tonight, you've just got to commit yourself and, and go for it. Actually, as a centre-half, it's great when you see your goalkeeper take that responsibility to come out. It saves you an awful lot of headaches over the course of the season. Adam Matthews here for Gavin Ray for Cardiff. Ray into Michael Chopra. Chopra breaks to Wildig, and here's McCormack. Lewis Carey there on uh, sentry duty for the home team to clear. Doesn't quite look sharp enough yet, Chopra. I know he's just come back into the team. He's just had a couple of occasions where at his best he'd be away and looking to get shots in, and he's just not been sharp enough so far yet. McNaughton. There's uh, Joe Ledley. He'll be playing through pain, he is uh, due a hip operation, which he uh, has postponed for now. Here's Mark Hudson, Hudson ball in, looking from McCormack's head, it's going to break back here for McNaughton again for Cardiff. McNaughton's pass. Ledley. Ledley again pressured by Cole Skews, and it's come all the way back to Marshall this time. Hudson, who scored Cardiff's goal in that uh, one-all draw with Blackpool at the uh, Cardiff City Stadium on Saturday. They were booed off. And there's three league games winless for Cardiff, but they remain fourth in the ever-tight championship. He's Elliott.
Gerrard. Anthony Gerrard is the cousin, by the way, of Liverpool and England's Stephen. Joined from uh, Warsaw this season, former Everton junior. A little bit of pressure on there when you're at uh, family gatherings. How's the how's the better one of the family doing? But uh, I'm sure he's making his way in the world. You know, he's, he's moving up this football ladder and good opportunity. Certainly, if he has uh, a career similar to Stephen, to be some player. Yeah, spent five years at Warsaw before joining uh, Dave Jones at uh, Cardiff this season. And he's earned some rave reviews so far in the Championship. This is all. Ball's angled ball in, Clarkson arriving at the far post, there came hands against Matthews, it's a corner only. Well, he's got himself in a real mess here, he doesn't know whether to head it, I, I think this probably does strike his arm, certainly the appeals are from the Bristol City players would indicate that has been the case, he's just got his body position all wrong, and slipped as well, which didn't help, we just see it come in again here. I mean, it looked to just bobble down, it certainly hit his hand as he fell, it would probably have been a bit harsh as he slipped as well, but uh, he's been a bit lucky there, he's got away with one. So a corner only, and Hartley again will be the uh, dead ball deliverer for Bristol City. He's got uh, Fontaine and Carey in there, Carey's already won two headers from set place, hit the post with one of them. Watch this time by Mark Hudson, Nicky Maynard lurking too for Bristol City. In by Hartley, Ray half away. Chopper was fully committed. Might regret that one, a five-yard slide in the snow. You can see him shaking his hands off. <laughs> He'll have certainly felt that one. I mean, there's been good, honest endeavour, hasn't there? We're really lacking a bit of quality. You can you can imagine why. You see the conditions really aren't easy. Both teams are having, having a good go. It's a shame, really, because what a great venue this is. Two teams, such a big local rivalry. It could have been a fantastic fixture. We know the players are doing their best at this moment, but it could have been a great fixture. This place, when it's full, is absolutely fantastic. Played here in 95 with Everton, and what an atmosphere it was on the day. The fans really got behind their team, and, and they were actually very unlucky on the day not to beat us. Of course, he went on to win the trophy that season. Yeah, it was, and, and certainly if you'd seen our performance here in that game, and we were just nowhere near, and actually Joe Royal, I think, went back to his board after that and said after that performance, put a little wager on us for the cup, and and we did go on to better things, but uh, Bristol City were by far the better team on that day. And the, the, play, the, the whole atmosphere was just fantastic, the place was full, and uh, they're really committed supporters. A big team, great history down here, and as Cardiff are as well. Both teams in the second tier at present, the Championship, are both with uh, ambition, certainly, of at least a playoff place this coming season. Here's uh, Danny Haynes pressuring uh, McNaughton, who has to go back to his goalkeeper, and... Marshall away, comes to Bradley Orr though for Bristol City, Hartley, Orr, Elliot, there's that loser's medal from six years back Elliot, in towards Nicky Maynard who took it nicely but couldn't quite get away from Gerrard, Wildig's pass here from McCormack to Chase, Ross McCormack held up here by Liam Fontaine, Gavin Ray takes it over, McCormack, now it's Adam Matthews, what can Matthews do, he finds Whittingham, watched by Orr, he's not really got himself into the game Peter Whittingham has, we've talked about the quality he's got and at the start of the season he was really dictating the pace of the game on his own but he's really not been in it at all, service hasn't been great up to him but he's, he's really not been in it at all tonight so far. Skews and now it's uh, McAllister. McAllister's pass is rather wayward. Chopra closing this down. And away by Gherkin, but chipped back in and chipped just over the top. It was a, a horrible pass which almost let Chopra in and then Wildig with the uh, lofted effort on the follow up, but it stays scoreless. Well, wow, great vision from Wildig. Terrible back pass. I mean, you just don't do that at the best of times, and that's when he'll be getting gripped by the throat at half time by his goalkeeper. Great vision from Wildig and just a little dink shows the quality he's got in that left foot and, and very unfortunate to uh, open his account with a really good goal. Well, it was um, pretty harem scarum defending from Bristol City, but they get away with it for now. And we wait still for the first goal in this uh, third round tie. Yeah, I think Jamie McAllister there will be uh, just quietly, sheepishly wandering out to the left-back position and he'll give a little 
conciliatory wave to his goalkeeper and then uh, I think lock himself in a in a toilet cubicle at half time there. Keep out of the way of the big guy. Well, Dave Jones's team have had their moments in this first half. Now they must defend. It's a free kick hit long in towards Fontaine who is well forward. This is Chopra. Bradley Orr with Chopra Orr has come away with the ball ahead is Haynes. It's Bradley Orr looking to work it square, but he's given it away. And Gavin Ray can get the Cardiff counter going. Yeah, just Chopper again, just giving the ball away, just for all his quality, he just can't do that. And then he went to ground very easy, trying to make amends with the tackle, and, and Orr actually should have done better in the end. Gerrard, back pass, which uh, Marshall is able to deal with. Now Hudson for Cardiff, for Matthews. 13 first half minutes to go. Here's Whittingham for Cardiff City, he's got ahead McCormack and Chopra. Here goes Ross McCormack, little back in looking for Chopra. And Orr, despite his goalkeeper's call, gets the ball away for a throw in. Surely he's got to shoot. Great little ball slip to him, just have the confidence. Put, shouldn't even, as a good striker, shouldn't even have to look there. He knows where the goal is, just strike it with that right foot. Hasn't scored, remember, since April of last season. Ross McCormack, who was so prolific for the Bluebirds last season, but fruitless so far. This it has been injury hit so far, but you see again here the back heel. But as Matt says, the shot was on. Yeah, just and you can bet this time last year. It's amazing how confidence affects these forwards. You can bet this time last year it would have laced that across the goalkeeper and it would have probably nestled in the bottom corner and it would have wheeled away really happy as it was. Possession just broke down simply. Matthews flick here for Whittingham. It's going to come back to Matthews maybe, but in the way is McAllister. Comes back to Joe Ledley. Ledley then pressured, and now the uh, defensive chase is on. That back pass is a little short too, and Marshall gets it away. And the ball will hold on the snowy surface. Chopra though here for McCormack. He pass it back from far enough, it'll end up as a snowball, won't it, by the time it gets back to the goalkeeper. Could have a few comical ones, but it did well, Marshall again committed himself there and swung through it. Sometimes when the attacker's closing you down, you're expecting to get clattered once you make your follow-through, but he did well, got good height and distance on it. Danny Haynes, now it's uh, Elliot, and this is Lewis Carey. Gherkin's clearance, it's met there by the head of Aaron Wildig. Long ball this time, and a chase on here for Nicky Maynard, and Marshall came to meet him. Yeah, I mean, it's one where he's again committed himself, which was admirable, and the one thing he did really well was not go to ground. He made Maynard make a decision and, and just stood tall and strong, and Maynard was stretching, but we talked about running down those channels, he just takes a chance, Maynard gets himself in. I mean, he took a bit of a fly hack, Marshall, he got some contact on the ball, but his heart would have been in his mouth a little bit there. And they've had their fair share of corners so far, Bristol City, but they've yet to make one really tell. This time the uh, kick is going to be taken by Jamie McAllister. McAllister's calling towards the near post, it's turned away by Whittingham. Kept alive here for Hartley. Hartley's ball swelled in and Marshall able to gather. Now he's looked very comfortable, Marshall, when the ball's been above his head. And he's done really well, ball's whipped into the box and... So good when, you, when your goalkeeper's in good form like that and commands his whole box, makes you feel uh, an awful lot happier as a centre half or one of the fullbacks. Won the uh, Scottish Cup twice with Celtic, David Marshall, before his move south to first Norwich last season, with whom he went down. Well, he was one of Norwich's better players last season, hence why Cardiff chose to uh, make him theirs in the summer. Here's Aaron Wildig. They claim hands, and it is handball. on a yellow card too, don't forget, so it has to be mighty careful now. It is an interesting one, isn't it? If the, the referee judges that he's stuck his arm out to stop that one, and that catches him high up on the arm, and the one thing he hadn't done is particularly stuck his arm out, but very easy to pick up yellow cards. We don't like to see it, we don't like to see players, certainly for the two challenge, you know, it's hardly had a bad challenge really, but wouldn't want to be getting sent off for something as silly as that. Well, the uh, right boot of Ross McCormack looks likely here for Cardiff City. Also there is uh, Ledley, and by Whittingham instead, looking 
towards that far post, but over here. Yeah, but just looked like he caught his teammates out. Looks like a good delivery, that. They they looked like they felt he was going to shoot, or, or maybe McCormack was going to shoot again. And that's a horrible ball to try and deal with as a, as a defender. You're delighted to see it run across them. The predatory entries of strikers, they have to get across their men there. Well, scoreless so far in the snow in the West Country. The seven-side derby, the 77th running of the fixture. Here's Gavin Ray for Cardiff. Yeah, the short journey across the M4 and the Seven Bridge to uh, to get here tonight. Yeah, they've tried their best, the fans, haven't they? But most of them, I think, are probably intent on keeping warm. Probably got so many layers on, they can't actually uh, get too much air down to those lungs to start shouting for their teams. And the club had talks with the police and the local authorities this morning to make sure the game was safe to go ahead in terms of the uh, roads around Ashton Gate. We've got the thumbs up. Here's uh, McNaughton for Cardiff. It is an interesting one, isn't it? Because the, the teams have tried so hard to play and the club have tried so hard to get the fixture on. <laughs> then the weather comes in like this and you think, well, maybe it might have been better on <laughs> another day, a better fixture. But that also creates problems because the clubs, especially as they have league priorities as well, really don't want the fixtures piling up. It's horrible. Once they're here and started, they just want to finish this game, no matter what the result. Bradley Orr. Looking for Nicky Maynard, it's met there by uh, Hudson here for Cardiff, and Hudson clears it away. There's a Cardiff player down in need of attention, which is why Hudson chose to uh, find touch on that occasion. An interesting one, didn't see the incident at all. Not exactly sure what he's done, probably we talked about the muscles on a cold night tonight, maybe he's just tweaked himself, but I certainly didn't see him pull up particularly, didn't see a challenge either. And Gavin Ray has had a broken hand, but it's not the hand which is giving him some grief at the moment. Dave Jones with maybe a reshuffle to make, should uh, Ray not be able to continue. He's back on his feet anyway. I think the signal he's going to have to come off. He didn't look comfortable. And this would be a nightmare for David Jones. He's got young players in the team already. He's trying to sustain a challenge at the top of the championship. And now they're just going to strip someone off, I think, and, and make the change immediately, which is never a good sign. That indicates that Ray probably felt something, a little tweak in the hamstring, maybe it just popped a bit. Yeah, Solomon Taiwo is going to come on. He's a young Nigerian midfielder. He signed from Dagenham and Redbridge in the summer. Hasn't played too many first-team games since coming from Dagenham. And he comes now. Spells in non-league football and in the USA with uh, Fort Wayne Fever. In Indiana. Yeah, I've seen them a lot. Good side, like to pass it. And he began with Millwall as a junior. Moved to England when he was 18 months old from Nigeria. And he's a tough midfield character. He hasn't featured too much in Cardiff's first 11 since arriving in the summer. But a good opportunity for him now. Obviously, if Gavin Ray's got a muscle injury, he might be out for a few weeks. What a, a great night to make an impression. Not the easiest thing to do. And I hope he's been looking after himself on the bench because this is a night as a substitute where you have to be really professional. Make sure you're ready to go on the pitch because coming on in these conditions, if you're not ready, it can really embarrass you. It's on there by Will Dig. It's going to break towards Chopra. Here's Will Dig again, who's had a decent start to uh, first team life with Cardiff tonight. Here's Matthews under pressure. Matthews, another boxed in by Cole Skews. Taiwo's first touch. And through it goes for McCormack, but the uh, flag is up for offside. Wouldn't count anyway. Flag was up early against Ross McCormack. It was up early, but it's tight. Brad Yours tucked in behind, and he's just stepping up, just probably shouted across the line. They've done well, good experience from the back four there. But they just take those chances, the forwards just keep taking a chance. You only need to get in once and someone to slip up or lose their confidence. And actually, he's going to find himself booked now, McCormack. Yeah, Silly, needless card. booking. So kicking the ball away, descent by action in the eyes of Darren Deadman. So the first half's third yellow card goes to Ross McCormack. Silly, isn't it? Some professional shouldn't be getting yourself booked for things like that. Heard the whistling plenty of time, nothing to gain by just trying to chip the goalkeeper there. Finds himself in the book, just, just ridiculous. Ledley. All taken down neatly and nicely here by uh, Michael Chopra. Elliot tackles back and tackles back well. Elliot for all. The head is Danny Haynes. Haynes the intended target. But Norton 
is robbed by Danny Haynes here. Haynes then towards Maynard, but can't if block it away. Bradley Orr. Hartley. Oh, it's Clarkson who's had a quite first half so far. Cole Skews with the run. In goes the cross, looking for Maynard, turned away by Gerrard. Whittingham turns smartly here for Cardiff, though. McCormack. McCormack pressured. Matthews down the line. It just looked to me like they struggled to stretch the game, Cardiff. Struggled to run beyond this Bristol City back four. Chopper, I've talked about, not looking particularly sharp at the moment. And McCormack doesn't look in great form. And neither of them really want to run the channels. Happy coming to feet, but you've got to stretch the play at some point. Maynard was well watched there by Anthony Gerrard. And here's Taiwo. Matthews. Five here is the captain, uh, Mark Hudson. It cost over a million pounds from uh, Charlton in the summer. And his second goal for Cardiff at the weekend against Blackpool. The target there was Nicky Maynard and the shots from Clarkson. Shot for his touch was heavy, it breaks to uh, Haynes and now here's Marvin Elliott. Overlapping is uh, Bradley Orr. Elliott, Hartley. Into the feet of uh, Haynes and Elliott's pull back, looking to uh, pick out Cole Skews. Good for Gary Johnson because he gets his team to play, really asks them to pass the ball around, hates to see the ball played. Good one touch passing, not great conditions, but they've tried hard to do it. Elliott's ball in, it came a long way too. It was missed by Gerrard, but not missed by goalkeeper Marshall. Yeah, they get the benefits because they end up creating space because the pass is so quick, Cardiff players can't get around them. Keep putting those balls into dangerous areas, and as we've mentioned so many times already tonight. And you get the benefits from the passing late in the game. Arsenal do it to teams at the top of the Premiership. They pass it for 70 minutes, and teams wear themselves out, and, and then Arsenal strike late on. And Bristol City will be looking to do the same here. The last game here was uh, back on the December the 28th when they drew here with Watford 2-2. It has been over two weeks since they last had meaningful action, Bristol City. Yeah, it can often work against you. Teams talk about liking a bit of a rest and some time off for their players, which just break off as they come forward here. Through Chopra. Holding in the middle, it's Michael Chopra here, whitting him in there as well. Carries yeah. header away. Yeah, just saying, and then, and then you have the break, but after two weeks you could be rusty and you can go the other way, and, and it can be a, a little bit lethargic, the performances, particularly on difficult nights as well. So it's a fine line between being ready and, and stale. Inside the last minute of the first half, and Carl Skews gets a talking to, and no more than that from Darren Dedman for this challenge on uh, Aaron Wildick. Oh, that's good referee, that's sensible, it's, it's not malicious, he's not high. On a night like tonight, you have to give the players a bit of the benefit of doubt, else you're going to end up sending players off and certainly booking a considerable number for pretty meaningless challenges. Whittingham's free kick then for Cardiff. In by Whittingham, allowed to travel a long way. Haynes with Wildig. Haynes gets away from the 17-year-old. Well, there is McNaughton for Cardiff. Oh, no! Get off! Get off! Ward is up. It says there'll be two minutes of additional time at the end of this first half. Darren Sheldrake is the fourth official down there with the uh, woolly hat on. Danny Haynes goes long towards David Clarkson. I think we would have a masochist as a referee to put up six minutes or something, wouldn't you, in these conditions? So. Two is about uh, as good as we can hope for, I think. Yeah, there was the one stoppage for uh, Gavin Ray's injury and a subsequent substitution. That's a piece of loose control by uh, Kevin McNaughton. Yeah, brought it on himself because it was a poor throw in the first place. He's pretty centre half under all sorts of pressure. He had to return the favour. Bradley Orr here for Elliott, and this now is uh, Fontaine. And the shot from range is wide of goal. And again, it was the uh, the oldest head on the field for them, Lewis Carey. Now he's been very good in this first half. He's led his team well. Just strikes that one wide of that left hand upright, but now he's been good. He's driven the troops on, and he'll relish these conditions. Another game for him, another one with the belt, and been a fantastic serve down here at Ashton Gate. How would you uh, sum up the uh, the first half? 
Well, it's been scrappy. The conditions have really dictated the poor quality of play. One or two little half chances. Uh, not the greatest atmosphere in the ground and, and a very, very difficult night. But nice no, and good, honest endeavour. And we just need a goal, don't we, early in that second half? And maybe late in the first, here's Aaron Wildig for Cardiff. You are the eternal optimist. That's Whitting and it's going to break to Taiwo, that uh, first half substitution with uh, Gavin Ray going off and uh, Solomon Taiwo coming on. McCormack. And, uh, Whittingham, Ledley, McCormack. It's Ross McCormack still for Cardiff here. It's a really good, strong run. Whittingham. Maybe one last first half chance. We're over the allotted two minutes, and Darren Dedman says enough's enough in the first half. In the West Country snow, we've had no goals, but lots of energy and lots of endeavour. Lewis Carey came closest early on for the home team with a header which thumped off David Marshall's post. Cardiff 2 had their moments, a lob from Aaron Wildig, the player making his first start at 17 years of age, which was over the bar. But otherwise, a fairly tame first half in this FA Cup third round tie at Ashton Gate. As the two teams head off to the warmth of the dressing rooms, the half-time score here is Bristol City nil, Cardiff City nil. Welcome back to a snowy, scoreless seven-side derby at Aston Gate. FA Cup round three. Bristol City nil, Cardiff nil at half-time. Two teams from the second tier, the championship, two playoff chasers. And thus far, nothing between the teams in this FA Cup tie. The replay, by the way, would be a week tonight, next Tuesday, the 19th of January, at the Cardiff City Stadium if we don't have a winner in the next 45 minutes. Still snowing, as you can see. The ball is, at the moment, still rolling through. There's a, a change here as well. Alvaro Saborio, the Costa Rican striker, not used to snow, is uh, going to come on. And in place of uh, Clarkson, who was in the first half, in truth, Matt Jackson, uh, rather... Uh, not really involved at all. No, I think the only time you mentioned him was to say that we hadn't mentioned him, wasn't it? Which is indicative of the performance. And you lead in the line up there, you, you've really got to have a good go. Maybe you don't have a goals return, but you've really got to put the work rate in and the effort and uh, hold the ball up for your teammates to get up alongside you. So, where we go for the second half, Saborio is on for Clarks. And Saborio is a, a Costa Rican striker on loan from Sion in Switzerland. This is uh, Solomon Taiwo for Cardiff for uh, Adam Matthews. Gerard. And there is that uh, change confirmed. Saborio on for David Clarkson. That's Michael Chopra for Cardiff for Aaron Wildig. Wouldn't quite fall there for Whittingham for Cardiff. And if you've just joined, then Cardiff in their change colours are all yellow tonight. The Robins, the home team in their traditional red and white. Here's Whittingham. Didn't quite fall for McCormack. Here's Chopra. Chopra still, he's away from one challenge. Chopra still, he fires the shot against Fontaine. And Elliot clears away. Yeah, well, it's certainly been Cardiff who seems to have come out with a bit more momentum, spending much of the time in this Bristol City half. Whittingham, 15 goals this season for Peter Whittingham. 13 in the league, two in the Carling Cup. Looking to add to that with an FA Cup goal today. One of uh, several kind of players to have caught the eye in this transfer window. Michael Chopra's name, by the way, linked with a potential Newcastle return or maybe Celtic. And given Cardiff's financial woes at the moment, then you can't rule sales out in this transfer window. An estimated £27 million in debt and facing a second winding up order of the season at the moment, Cardiff. It's been a, a fairly torrid time off the pitch for them. And they are currently fourth in the championship table. This is Bradley Orr. Yeah, and that's credit to Dave Jones and his squad because very often these off-field bits and pieces can translate onto the pitch and, and have an effect on performances, but they found a way to keep getting those results and got themselves a nice new stadium now, and it's, it's amazing that they're still having those problems. 
It's this season their first at their uh, new home, the Cardiff City Stadium. Here's Saborio. That was the first touch for the Costa Rican. He's got two goals so far for Bristol City. He was prolific with Suppressor in his homeland and with uh, Sion in Switzerland. This is Cole Skews, Bristol born, academy graduate here at Ashton Gate. Elliot for Hartley. Now Bradley Orr on a yellow card in the first half. Bradley Orr. Orr gets the cross in as well. And it's away and behind by Gerard. Yeah, good defending. Just attack the ball in that space. Make sure you're the one that gets your head on it first. If it goes high and over your own crossbar, so be it. You defend the set piece. But got himself in a decent little position there to stop that ball whipped in. And yeah, good defending. Obviously, the goalkeeper having a go at his fullback to stop the crosses as well. In the league, they're eight places higher than. Uh, Bristol City, Cardiff, fourth plays twelfth. It's a Hartley corner here for the home team, in by Hartley. And Marshall out in the first half has shown uh, willingness to come and claim the crosses, and he's done well so far tonight. This is Ross McCormack. McCormack still looking to combine with uh, Will Dig here. This is Adam Matthews. Matthews pulls it back here for Solomon Taiwa. Taiwa's pass, Whittingham. Whittingham still, Hartley will intervene and he's tugged back by Solomon Taiwa and that's going to be a, a free kick for Bristol City. Uh, ticking off for the first half substitute. <laughs> Trying to act the innocent and it was just away. I mean, Whittingham's not himself into the game, I was hoping to see him have more impact and know his quality. He's luckily really there, Taiwa, I mean, he's nearly pulled the shirt off. Hartley's back, and that was a close one. He must have been close to going into the book there as well. Just a bit of a ticking off, but certainly had a big grip on the shirt there. McCormack, Taiwo. Taiwo's pass too heavy though for uh, Peter Whittingham. Two teams ending for a return to the top flight at some point. 48 years since Cardiff last played in the top division. 30 since Bristol City were there. Elliott's ball across, good ball in as well, looking for uh, Nicky Maynard. Yeah, good ball again, fizzed in on that right-hand side, Gerard did well again. Just having a word with Hudson, but he's got himself in good position, been very impressed with him tonight, seems to take up, read the, read the game well, gets himself in there and, and commits himself to challenging for that first ball in. Cousin of Stephen. Yeah, yeah, there's, Gerard. there's enough facial resemblance, I think you could just about pick it out, couldn't you? Certainly got some footballing ability as well, to be fair to him. That's another fairly uh, short kick by Marshall, which he gets away with his tie work. Over the top looking for uh, McCormack's game run, but there was too much on it. That's the one thing Cardiff haven't done, they haven't stretched the play at all. McCormack's been happy to come short. Chopper I was disappointed with, as I said, just before half-time, but came short as well. Sometimes you've just got to have that bit of pace, you've got to have a bit more about you. They play this diamond, it's neat and tidy in the midfield, but it makes it very easy for a back four when they're constantly seeing the play going on in front of them. Saboria. This is uh, Hartley. A bit of support now from uh, McAllister. No way past Matthews, McAllister again. Saboria does well. Up by two in yellow shirts, it comes back to uh, the Costa Rican and again off the shins of Hudson this time. Cardiff defending well, he did do well, Hudson, but quite sharp from Saborio. Certainly made more of an impression so far than uh, David Clarkson did in his previous 45 minutes. Yeah, Clarkson just one goal so far. It came on his debut back in August, the former Motherwell striker. This is McAllister, McAllister's ball in. Nicky Maynard's tee up here for Hartley. Hartley's strike is a decent one, but a fraction too high for Bristol City. Yeah, great strike, good little layback, and, and he's really got his laces through this one. We talked about the one in the first half that skewed wide, and he's, what, 30 yards out there, and he's really fizzed out. I think uh, it was fairly safe that Marshall would probably have saved it. He didn't look to be too perplexed at that one, but a good strike. And, yeah, good play from Bristol City, the first real attack of any note for them in this second half. Marshall away, it stays scoreless for now. There's Taiwa beaten in the air by Liam Fontaine. Matthews and then away by Gerard. 
Chopra holds off McAllister, who's on a yellow card, has to be careful. Michael Chopra. Solomon Taiwo for Joe Ledley. Adam Matthews. 18 tomorrow, don't forget. Taiwo. And that went on here towards uh, McCormack. Matthews for Taiwo. Aaron Wilder given away. And Danny Haynes can break away. But in the middle of Saborio, Haynes will step on the gas himself here and across to uh, get the ball clear out of harm's way is Gerard who has then given the ball straight back to Haynes in goes the cross and Gerard third two off the pitch yeah funny one I mean he's just slipped and really should have just let the ball go out and I think he probably collided with that hoarding and he's still hobbling as he comes back onto the pitch there he's done really well tonight I've been very very impressed with him but he doesn't want to be injuring himself in circumstances like that that makes it a little bit farcical we saw one or two uh, misplaced back passes in the first half, one or two errors because of the surface. It is still snowing in Ashton Gate, they're not as heavy as in the first half. The flakes not quite as, uh, as thick as they were. McNaughton's throw here for Whittingham. It's one of those games as a player when you finally thaw out about two o'clock in the morning. And you get not getting a hot shower and that doesn't warm you up and then you've got the team bus and that's still cold and you have to get out and get in your car to drive home as well and no, not a night for playing one of those you want to win chalk off the list and move on to the next round well, Dave Jones is uh, well wrapped anyway under some pressure this season Dave Jones the fans expectations have been raised a level given their success in recent years with the FA Cup final two years ago and strong league showings as well the fans want promotion this is Solomon Taiwo for Cardiff. Cole Skews. Skews for the ball through, looking for Maynard's pace, and he's got lots of that. Marshall and Maynard's charging down, but the ball bobbles away and behind for a goal kick. It could have gone anywhere. Yeah, smashing attitude from Maynard. Haven't seen a great deal of him tonight, but... Marshall again, the goalkeepers haven't been helped, have they, by the back force tonight? Gerard playing that back on a slippery surface. And it's easy for Maynard, he runs down the line of the ball and very brave, just turns his back on it. And, and Marshall, to be fair to him, he's got good, a good strike on it, it's good velocity on the ball. And might have stung Maynard, but it would have been worth it if it ends up in the back of the net. Crystal City once FA Cup finalists, 101 years ago, at the old Crystal Palace against Manchester United. They have won the Welsh FA Cup, though, when it was open to clubs on the uh, Welsh border. But that was a popular victory. In goes the ball from Whittingham. Yeah, they won the Welsh Cup in 1934. These days it is close to uh, English clubs on the border. England versus Wales tonight, the seven-side derby. Oh, thus far, not a derby to really live too long in the memory. There's Gerard. No, you'd imagine uh, Aaron Wilded would probably be the one that will remember it most, as it's been his full debut. And uh, I'm sure he will hope he'll be playing in slightly more exciting games than this for the rest of his career. And a career that looks to be fairly promising, because he's certainly shown enough here tonight uh, with certain moments of quality, particularly that chip in his first half to make people think he's going to have a pretty good future in the game. Well, 17, 18 in three months' time, and Dave Jones does give the young players at Cardiff a chance in the team. The likes of Matthews, and of course, before, before him, players have come in as well. In goes that deep cross, which is in the arms of the goalkeeper. Aaron Ramsey, I guess, the most famous of those juniors to come through the ranks of Cardiff in recent years, now with Arsenal. Yeah, he's doing really well. I've seen him a few times this year, playing for the Arsenal, and done some commentary there, and he looks really sharp. He's making a... A lot of progress in it and saw him up at Berlin and he was excellent alongside Cesc Fabregas in that midfield. There's a foul on Alvaro Saborio and a free kick for Bristol City against Anthony Gerrard. Well, the home team has certainly due a cup run, they haven't been past the third round too often recently. Only passed the third round stage once in the last eight seasons. And they went out in the fourth round to Middlesbrough on penalties a couple of years ago. 
They are due a cup run. That's Hartley's free kick for them, sent in, and it's met by the uh, head of Saborio. And Carey up there again. He certainly wants his name on that score sheet. If you're going to run all that way, you might as well make an effort to uh, get your head on that as well. And probably Saborio would have been better off letting his slightly bigger comrade get uh, on the end of that one. And Cardiff have come a long way in the last few years. Only uh, seven years ago, they were playing in the fourth tier of English football, but under Dave Jones, they have become a, a real force again. Looking to return to the top flight of English football for the first time in 48 years. And it is amazing, isn't it? You mentioned earlier about the fans' expectations. You, know, you talk about that seven years ago, the playing at that level, and, and now the fans are clamouring for Dave Jones to get them in the Premiership or else lose his job. It, it is quite remarkable because the job he's done has been absolutely fantastic down there in South Wales. Saborio. This now is uh, Bradley Orr. Danny Haynes likes the fires again. Now up here by Joe Ledley, and then McNaughton tackles back and fouls it. And gives a free kick to... Bristol City in a very promising position here. Yeah, very promising. Good play from Haynes, the first time he's really got away from McNaughton. I praised him in the first half for sticking to his task of defending pretty well. And it looked like he got back there to make the tackle, but uh, just lunged in and just whipped this ball across that six-yard box. Heading towards the uh, hour point in the game. And on this free kick is uh, McAllister. As you see again, the challenge here by uh, Kevin McNaughton. Yeah, he didn't need to check, Haynes. It, he really got back, and actually, McNaughton would argue he got the ball there. He's stamping a little bit, which always looks difficult in these slippery conditions. Maynard or McAllister. It's McAllister to get the ball in, and the header is off target in the end. It was a decent side of goal there for the home team as the ball came fizzing across. We kind of again had enough bodies back to uh, put the pressure on here. The chance came to Saborio. Yeah, great delivery. It would have been interesting. He was actually offside, Saborio. I don't, the linesman didn't give it and it came to nothing, but it uh, would have been interesting to see if the flag would have gone up there because he was a good two yards ahead of Hudson when the ball was actually struck. I think they felt the last touch came off Hudson too, Bristol City, but the referee saw nothing wrong with it. Yeah, I don't quite know how he interpreted that because it was an obvious deflection, wasn't it? So whether they gave the offside and didn't really bother flagging, I'm not too sure. Helped in by uh, McAllister. Danny Haynes, Saborio turned neatly but couldn't quite turn away. It is at times elements of dancing on ice out there. Here goes Solomon Taiwa. Taiwa's ball in early ball in which Lewis Carey meets and the header will stay in bounds here with Taiwa. Murphy blocks it away in front of the uh, travelling band of Cardiff fans who've come along the M4. Yeah, they're just looking for anything to raise their spirits, aren't they? Happy to get behind their team and a couple of decent opportunities for Tyway to put the ball in. Maybe a bit, a bit disappointed he must, didn't miss the first man out. So, a good end to end play. This is picking up a bit in pace. Whittingham's corner an hour gone. Lanced on towards Chopra here. Two yellow shirts went for the same ball. It's Michael Chopra's cross, comes off the back of McAllister and behind for another corner. Just got to sustain a period of pressure. When you get yourselves a little bit on top, like Cardiff are doing here, just pen the team in, just apply a little bit of pressure, try and keep the ball the best you can, keep them in their half and, and keep them away from your goal. But as that pressure builds, you get more and more chances as well. 41 years since Cardiff last won the seven-side derby here at Ashton Gate. They apply some pressure now early in the second half. In goes this latest corner. And there is Ledley, they claim handball, here's Gerrard. Tees up Taiwo. And Joe Ledley, Ledley's cross inviting one as well and turned away to Ledley once more. Comes off Carey this time, does it? Yes, another corner for Cardiff or so they thought. Looked a little bit like a half a handball, didn't it? There was a, a muted appeal from Gerard, nothing more than that, but this is where I'm saying that they've, they've forced another corner, the ball's come out, they've taken good positions outside the box, force another corner, get good delivery in there, keep Mark applying Hudson. that pressure. Here's the uh, man to aim for here, scored at the weekend against Blackpool, and the header down, and Gherkin has to collapse on the ball and cling on. Gerard's header didn't have much power, he claims his shirt was being pulled as well. I'm sure it would have been, everybody seems to do it these days. We see it so much, particularly when we have the benefit of uh, the slow motion. I may have been guilty of it myself on occasion. Surely not. 
every Here's single Hartley. trick in the book. <laughs> Here's a Cole Skews for Bristol City. Into Nicky Maynard, turns well. Maynard shot deflects as well as he drags it across goal. Yeah, we've seen a lot tonight, haven't we? Just players not been able to strike the ball cleanly. That was his first real effort in, of a sight in this second half. And just got half a turn and just a bit of composure required. Just hit the target as the minimum, really. Well, kind of announced before Christmas they will build a statue of Fred Keenan outside their new home. He was the captain when they won the FA Cup for the only time back in 1927. And he will be remembered long with that statue at their uh, new home ground. Their first season away from Union Park this campaign, of course. I bet Fred played on worse pitches than this, didn't he? I'm sure he did back in uh, the 1920s. Even the summer games seem to be on pitches like this, then. And towards Saburo here for Bristol City. The pitch is hell of OK, given the snow so far. Carey and deflects into the path of Gerard to clear. This is uh, Liam Fontaine. Danny Haynes. Haynes cross, which is disappointing. Yeah, I think uh, they will be slightly disappointed with Haynes. They'd have looked at McNaughton and said, well, he's playing the opposite side from, from what he normally does. Can you run him? Can you make him make tackles with that left foot that he's not really sure about and early on it looked like it was going to be quite a pivotal confrontation in the game but they haven't really got the ball out there at all have they just see the early chance here of the, the header and a good save from Gherkin got himself down clutched that ball into his chest and looked very safe both goalkeepers done very well tonight uh, given the conditions especially this is Ross McCormack McCormack with the strike which Gherkin gets body behind that's in the goalkeeping manual yeah, and even there you see it just bounces in front, no real pace in the shot, but just curled in there and goalkeeper has to do the right thing. I mean, they're just hoping that, please let my feet keep still, give me a bit of friction on the ball, and then as a defender you have a responsibility to go in and mop up any rebounds that come out as well. McAllister looking for Sabori, might come into Nicky Maynard, and there was uh, a whistle anyway and a free kick. Kind of have got a good record away from home this season. They've uh, won six of their 12 away games in the championship so far. Only four defeats for Dave Jones away from uh, the new stadium. But Cardiff with lots of off-the-field worries, of course, that uh, financial situation they have at the moment. The chairman Peter Ridsdale says there's no immediate threat to the club, but it's not a good situation to be in. It's a strange one, the winding up orders, isn't it? Because you see them kind of floated around quite a lot. They never really seem to come to anything at all, and the club seemed to survive them quite happily. But well, what it's the second one kind of had this season, the second winding up order they've had. Maybe the first one was a wind up. It could well have been. And Cardiff certainly have uh, a good league position to build on fourth at the beginning of play tonight. This is uh, Nicky Maynard, has Saboria with him for Bristol City towards the Costa Rican, turned away by Gerrard. Here's Michael Chopra. Neat turn, and he can run at Bristol City now and look to work the ball through towards uh, McCormack on that far side, but it's a final ball not quite there for Cardiff at the moment. No, it's always where it makes the difference, isn't it? I mean, good turn, the best we've seen from Chopra from his movement. We know he's got that capability, but just the final balls in that, that final third, whether from the wide areas or sliding them through, we just haven't really seen them from either team, have we? Here's Cole Skews from Bristol City. Danny Haynes. Haynes up against uh, McNaughton. Haynes deemed service to requirements by Roy Keane at Ipswich uh, at the end of last season. Now to uh, move here, and he's uh, got a good record in Derby games for Ipswich against Norwich. One of the fans named him the Canary Killer, given his habit of getting goals to win East Anglian derbies. This is his first seven-side derby in Bristol. Yeah, never the worst habit to have, is it? Scoring winning goals in derbies tends to make you very popular with fans, but good move down here, he seems to have benefited well from it as well. And, and Roy King has made plenty surplus to requirements down there at Ipswich, he's had a really yeah, tough yes, time, yeah, hasn't he's, he? Uh, he's had a real clear out Roy Keane in his, uh, what, year or so in charge at Ipswich. The winners here, by the way, will face Leicester in round four, a home tie. 
will be played on uh, the 23rd of January, Saturday. Any replay for this tie would uh, come a week tonight, next Tuesday. Which we are at the moment. A quarter of the game away from, still nil-nil here. And very tight still. Yeah, they are strange fixtures when the likes of Leicester or Cardiff come here to Ashton Gate because the teams really are looking at the Premiership. I mean, if they could, if they could guarantee they were going to be up there at the end of the season, they'd sacrifice anything. Unfortunately, the FA Cup maybe, arguably, has suffered a little bit because of that over the years. And, and the winners again have Leicester coming down, themselves riding high in the Championship. And just takes a little bit of the edge off when maybe their priorities are, are slightly somewhere else. And this was one of seven all Championship ties in the original third round draw. This is Michael Schopra up against the shins of McAllister for a Cardiff corner in the second half. They've had more than their fair share of corners too. Can they make one tell you, I wonder? Well, you feel that it's probably going to be a set piece that might settle this, if, if at all. There's not really been much play. There's a little shindig down here on the right-hand side. Yeah, Schopra wanted the quick corner. Martin Yerby is the assistant here. Yeah, I actually think he should. he's kept the ball here. And it's, He's got no right to do it as a substitute. I can't see who he is under his bobble hat and all the layers he's got on down there, but no, it's the, the first sort of fiery gesture. I mean, <laughs> Taron Dedman comes across just to have a word. Yeah, and he should do as well. He can't do that. He's just held on to the ball. And it's Gavin Williams, by the way, the uh, offending substitute here. Martin Yerby, the assistant, steps in between the two. And one got rather heated there on a chilly night in the West Country. Yeah, and then he pushes the assistant, that's, that's just poor professionalism, right in front of the away fans as well. A little bit silly there, just trying to get himself into the action. Nottingham's corner, and there is uh, pushing and shoving seen here by Darren Dedman, so we have a little hold up before that uh, corner's forthcoming. It's great, that chat. Don't do that again, and everyone just does exactly the same thing, and, and the referees never see it. Yeah, there it is, all the jostling and holding and shirt pulling. Whittingham's corner for Cardiff. Gherkin's come and hasn't really got there. Ball is loose and scuffed towards goal. And McCormack's shot was in the end tame and is held on to just about by Dean Gherkin. Well, he's complaining because he had a lot of bodies around him and certainly gave a big early shout. We heard it up here and, and you see them give him. But McCormack's got a great chance there again. We talk about him being right out of form in front of goal and he's just slashed at that. That was a really good chance. Here's Bradley Orr heading towards the game's last 20 minutes. Danny Haynes chasing on. You might dig your car out the snow, or are you digging mine up? And they get the shovel out the boot. It is uh, a snowy night in the West Country. Elliot through. Saborio. Now Danny Haynes for Bristol City, it's Bradley Orr's long, leaping cross. Lewis Carey's in there again. And the end shot was uh, rather disappointing and over the top from uh, Marvin Elliott. We're going to see a kind of uh, striking change too, it's going to be Warren Feeney coming on. Striker who, in... Uh, Three years with Cardiff has never scored for them. Did have a goal at the weekend ruled out for a foul on uh, Paul Rahubka, the Blackpool goalkeeper. And the ball's burst here, you don't see that too often, do you? Not in the modern game at all. I actually don't even know what's in a modern ball, that's quite interesting. Probably called it quits, the ball's had enough, and even that's given up, it's never a good sign. Yeah, the ball's got hypothermia. Here comes Warren Feeney, meanwhile. Not the best of striker records, that is it, not scoring. I think that's similar to my goal record. Yeah, I've been quite on loan with uh, Sheffield Wednesday, and his loan spell there lasted all of 13 minutes, just one appearance from the bench uh, for Sheffield Wednesday. Before Brian Laws, who brought him in, got the sack, so the new manager, the caretaker, didn't have a look at him and he didn't play anymore for the Owls. And He's back now with Cardiff, came up the weekend against Blackpool. Well, he's got a light Ashton Gate up here with the fastest ever FA Cup hat-trick. Watch this. Well, we'll see. By the way, the last ever hat-trick in this fixture was scored 19 years ago by a certain Andy Cole. Played away by uh, David Marshall. Went on uh, towards Chopra. Bradley Orr, 
Saborio chasing on and also chasing Maynard here and another risky ropey back pass which the goalkeeper has to be alert to. We could do a compilation of bad back passes tonight, couldn't we? Having spoken at the start to say just don't do them, just put your left foot through it, kick it out into the stand. Well, you know with the snow on the ground the ball will hold up and... and it's behind for a goal kick, they wanted more there, Bristol City, Maynard was appealing. Uh, ebbing towards a replay in Cardiff a week tonight. Yeah, we weren't that optimistic about a goal in this second half, were we? Nil-nil yeah. looked the uh, the best bet at half-time, and it looks like it might be that way. Another change going to be taking place here. And here's Gavin Williams on for uh, Paul Harkin. Williams, the player who was involved in the little contretemps with the assistant and uh, Michael Chopra a few moments ago. Well, he might be able to make a proper tackle on Chopra now. Hartley not really had an effect in this uh, second half. He was decent in the first half, broke forward a couple of times, showed a wise old head, but really hasn't been involved in this second half. Good little chance for Williams now. Whittingham. Whittingham still here for Cardiff. Can he get the cross in? Has support from Taiwo. Solomon Taiwo is ball in. It's half away. And there's Feeney. And Feeney again. Warren Feeney's strike is uh, blocked away for a second time and his wait for his first Cardiff goal goes on. Yeah, neither really looked uh, like they had much chance of going in and, and breaking that duck of his, but you know, at least he's shown like he wants to strike it. It's, it's always a good sign for a forward. And there's Ledley, but the whistle's gone for the uh, late challenge. It's going to be called all the way back here. And uh, talking to here for Danny Haynes. Yeah, one of those different ones for... For a referee because he's called it back and actually the ball was fly hacked through into what looked like a very good situation breaking away down that left hand side so he's just got to ground in the conditions again nothing malicious yeah the referee's given it but without really seeing where the flight of the ball was going McNaughton's Cardiff free kick kicked in long Gerrard's up there here's Taiwo and the strike is uh, rather rash and rather wayward and well over the top yeah, I think the shooting tonight can go into the same category as the back passes, can't it? As in the, don't do this at home if you're a young footballer trying to make your way in the world. Well, this is the team's first FA Cup meeting since the 1937-38 season, when Cardiff won in Bristol after a draw in Wales. Heading for a replay this time as well. Gavin Williams, referee, let's play go. McNaughton. Final quarter hour of the game at Ashton Gate. They really don't want to replay. Believe me, they really don't want to replay. Both managers will be desperately hoping that this one gets settled. Yeah, with the league games beginning to stack up too because of the, uh, the big freeze in England over the last couple of weeks. There's Matthews for Taiwo. Play goes on, Whittingham. Longer ball this time for Warren Feeney, off limits comes Dean Gherkin. And Gherkin's clearance is poor, it comes back out here and clipped in brilliantly! And Cardiff lead with a piece of brilliance! And it's a stunning goal from Michael Chopra. And there's been some sort of incident, did he get tripped up? I mean, the, the benches are up again, it's... Couldn't really see what happened amongst the bodies, but great for him. I mean, we know he's got great quality, that was fantastic. But as he ran back to celebrate, something just happened. I don't know whether maybe one of the Bristol City substitutes tripped him up. He, he seemed, seemed to lash out at somebody, takes nothing away from the goal. Gherkin has had a bit of a disaster there. That one's been scuffed the left foot. We talked about how difficult conditions are for those goalkeepers. Great vision from Chopper, what a fantastic finish. And it's his first goal since September, by the way. It's his 14th this season, and he will have scored few finer than this one. A lovely lob with the goal unguarded. Michael Chopra scores a stunner for Cardiff City. Yeah, and credit Feeney as well, just come on, but he's chased that one down. And I mean, Gherkin really shouldn't be out there at all, but what a good finish. And, yeah, it'll be interesting to see. We, we can't pick up on a replay exactly what the incident was down there by the benches, but didn't look too happy with something that went on. Chopra was the player involved in that little collision off the field with... Uh, Gavin Williams and the assistant Martin Yerby earlier, but Cardiff have the lead. They haven't won in Bristol, don't forget, in a seven-side derby for 41 years, 1969, the last time they won here. 
but ahead in this FA Cup tie. And with one hand at the moment on a potential tie at home to Leicester a week on Saturday. Yeah, well, it certainly opened the game up now. Bristol City pressures off the middle. Go for it. I should imagine uh, they'll just start throwing bodies forwards. Nothing to lose now. And can a card of just hold on? Here's Saborio. Blocked by Norton. Danny Haynes again to get the cross in. Tyro just flicks it away, but not very far away for Cardiff. Gavin Williams, another from the Ipswich player. Williams boxed in by Tyro. Here's Feeney. Yeah, credit Feeney. Again, he's closing down there. We talked about the goal scoring record, maybe taking the mickey a little bit, but it was him that created the goal by applying that pressure. Could quite easily have given up, wasn't ever really going to get on the end of it, but forced the uh, mistake from Dean Gherkin. But, and he's just done the same there. He's just worked his way across the line. And the goal scorers who work hardest tend to get the most goals at the end of their careers. Uh, Michael Chopra's goal means Gary Johnson's Bristol City have a job to do here with, what, 12 minutes to go. Here's uh, Nicky Maynard for Bristol City. Chopra's goal, the difference, his first since he scored four in a league game against Derby back in September. It's been a 13-match barren run before tonight. And this was, uh, it was Gary Johnson who was in collision with Chopra, the manager of Bristol City, on the touchline. Yeah, and he took a little jab in the chest. I don't think he, I don't think he did anything. I don't quite know why he was stood out there. I don't really know what was going on. I mean, he's a bit of a character, Gary Johnson. It would have been a little less classy if he'd just stuck out the foot. Here's Nicky Maynard. Can't quite pick his way through. It just runs through to David Marshall. Getting towards the game's last ten minutes then, and Cardiff at the moment are on the way to round four. It would be uh, another round three exit for Bristol City. This was the Maynard run. We're going to bring on another striker in John Akinde, the home team, in place of uh, a fullback. Uh, McAllis is going to come off for Akinde. Here's Gavin Williams. Cleared away. Fontaine. And that's going to be a Cardiff free kick. Backing in by the forward. Alvaro Saborio. Yeah, another big strong header from Gerard. He's been a good presence there. I've been very impressed with him tonight. Never going to be the easiest for him with that surname making his way in the football world. But no, he's really applied himself well and, and been very strong alongside uh, Hudson in that back four tonight. Marshall away for Cardiff. Maynard's touch is Saborio. And able to find Danny Haynes. It's McNaughton for Cardiff looking for Warren Feeney's run. Again, good play from Feeney. He's never catching that ball, but he's gone. And, and Carey's got nothing to do but play the ball out and just keeps the pressure on Bristol City. Tough to get out there half. And we see the last throw of the dice here with the Kindy coming on. Good chance that Bristol City will probably go to three at the back here and just, just throw the big man up front. McAllis has been on the yellow card all match and is just getting sacrificed here in, in the vain hope that they can get themselves back into this Bristol City. John Akinde has been on loan with Wickham Wanderers in League One this season. One goal for them. And he has played at Wembley before for Ebb's feet in the FA Trophy final a couple of years back. Only one goal for his current club. Came on his debut a couple of years ago against Plymouth. Yeah, Wembley looks a, a little bit of a long way off for him at this moment, doesn't it? Yeah, I'm sure the final in May will be in rather better conditions than this, too. As you see there, we're inside the last eight minutes or so. Michael Chopra's goal at the moment, the difference. What a goal to a really exquisite lob from out on this near touchline. And with goalkeeper Dean Gherkin somewhat uh, losing his bearings. I'm sure there's a few Bristol City fans wondering at this moment where they could have spent their hard-earned pennies slightly better. 
Here's a Kinde pressuring Hudson. Yes, it's not been a, a thrilling FA Cup tie. We've seen better, that's for sure. This is Warren Feeney for Cardiff, who at the moment have the lead. Or maybe part of the team which did so two years ago, that defeat to Portsmouth, Carnu's goal at Wembley, denying Cardiff the Cup in 2008. Well, I think Wounded might be about to get his first win bonus. He's not had much contribution in the second half, and I'm sure his legs are feeling pretty tired now. Not one of the easiest games to make your debut in, but it's always nice when you start with a win, and I probably think football's a pretty easy game uh, at the end of this, if the scoreline stays this way. Gavin Williams wouldn't take no for an answer. Here's John Akinde. And Williams again. And able to pick a way through past Joe Ledley. Ledley, and then he and Williams collide. Free kick to Cardiff to... Uh, Bristol City this time. And again, Tempers beginning to fray. Yeah, most of the action has been in those technical areas, hasn't it? All the controversial moments, I think. Referee's going to come across and have a quiet word with the benches. Dave Jones has just given both barrels to the uh, referee's assistant on this near -hand side, and he's still arguing his case. Those fourth Jones officials right. take some stick, don't they? Yeah, it's uh, Darren Sheldrake, by the way, today, who's uh, getting an earful down there, the uh, fourth official. I actually don't know what they were complaining about. I think maybe he thought that there was a couple of fouls prior to that one on Williams, but it didn't really seem too much. And, oh, they just want their team over the line, don't they? They want to be home as much as everybody else. It's a Cole Skews free kick here then for Bristol City. It's sent in, it's glanced on towards Akinde. Cardiff, though, no, they are counting down the, uh, the moments towards reaching the fourth round. It's Ford here to Taiwo. And through looking for Feeney's run and slid away. Kept alive here by Wilding, though, for Cardiff. Warren Feeney again. Feeney's pull back behind Whittingham. And Wilded shot too high. Well, not quite as good as his chip in the first half, but Feeney's done well again. He's chased the channels and been the perfect sub, really, at this stage. He's come on and, and got the goal. He's made an impression on the game in that respect, and, and now he's working really hard to try and see this one out. Great, when you send a, a player on and, and he has an impact on the game, OK, he's not, he's not scored, he's had, a, he's had a shot that got blocked in the box, but he's really worked hard, showed that he's wanted to come on and, and trying to take his chance to improve his uh, hopes of getting a start, a place in that starting eleven. Yeah, given a new lease of life, really, since he's returned from that loan spell, Feeney. Yeah, it's very easy for subs to feel sorry for themselves, and they sit there moping about on the bench for 75 minutes, and then they're given the chance to come on and don't create any sort of impression, and it's easy then for the manager to say, well, there you go, you've just proved exactly why you sat there in the first place. Here's Taiwo. He's done, as, he's done well as well, shown good appetite for the game since he's come on. Solomon Taiwo with the ball in for Peter Whittingham here. Whittingham still might come back to... Whittingham still... Robin Elliott. This is Lewis Carey. Skews given away. Adam Matthews for Cardiff. Ledley. Matthews down the line. Into Feeney's feet. Feeney battling away and the flag is up for a foul by Feeney who a measure of how far he'd fallen down the pecking order he was loaned out to Swansea of all teams. Cardiff's big rivals in Wales. That is, a tough one. Swansea. that is a tough one to justify. <laughs> They're running out in a Swansea shirt and they will accept, expect miracles. You see some sort of conspiracy when, when you get thrown across the other side of the uh, South Wales divide. Well, Cardiff at the moment are in the lead and looking good for a place in round four, unless there is a late leveller here for Bristol City. It's Gavin Williams with a ball in towards John Akinde, and there's the header from Akinde, which hasn't really got the venom to really trouble David Marshall. Get uh, McNaughton tucked in, took up a good position, and 
Gerard, who's been excellent all night, manages to put in a decent challenge as well. There's Wildig, and there's Feeney again, who is a willing runner for Cardiff. Lewis Carey, Cole Skews, almost closed down by Chopra. And there's the flick on for Nicky Maynard by Saborio. Elliot. Elliot again has Whittingham for close company. Last two minutes of the game, plus added time to come. And the flag is up here for a foul and a free kick to Cardiff City. Yeah, the game just looks like it's petering out a little bit. And even with the changes that Bristol City have made, they've never really got any momentum in the second half. They, they haven't really had a chance, have they? they haven't really got anything going at all. And they're frustrating night for the home fans who've made a real effort to get down here. And the ground staff who've worked so hard to get the fixture on, and it's all going to be pretty much an anti-climax, it seems. Only two defeats here at home this season for Bristol City. They lost in the uh, Carling Cup to Carlisle and in the league to Sheffield United here. Otherwise, it's been a pretty good home record for Gary Johnson's men. No, it's never an easy place to come at all. And hop back to that FA Cup tie we played down here. It was just great. I know how intimidating a place it could be. Also played here with Wigan when both teams were top of uh, League One as it is now. Another fantastic fixture. Bit of a shame when you see it like this tonight. There's Danny Haynes, full of tricks and running still. And as we enter the last minute of the 90, Danny Haynes still, it's a super run, but Whittingham is there for Cardiff and McNaughton as well. And the last touch was Danny Haynes. Yeah, gets a little bit lucky there, McNaughton, but I think he deserves that tonight. I've uh, picked him out a couple of times for his endeavour in a defensive sense, and he's done really well. Doesn't particularly want to be on that side of the pitch, and full-back is a position you think, well, if you can play right-back, you can play left-back, but it is completely different down that side. And he's done well. Well, tonight he's stuck to his task pretty well and, and kept a dangerous life quiet. Only Newcastle and West Bromwich Albion have better home away records than uh, Cardiff do this season. They're heading towards a, another win on the road in the FA Cup here. And as we tip towards added time. Oh, a slice, it might come to a kinde. Here's Solomon Taiwo. Into Feeney, and Feeney will chase here. Defender has to watch it. Lewis Carey. There'll be four minutes of added time, which we are in now. So there's time for someone to get the equaliser. Carey's throw. Gavin Williams. Bradley Orr for Bristol City. Orr's ball in. There's uh, the layoff for Skews to volley. And Cole Skews forces uh, a rare save tonight from David Marshall, who hangs on well in added time. Talked about Kindy having that physical presence. Marsh has been great tonight. He's got his body firmly behind everything. His hands have been really, really safe. Been very impressed with him. Marshall has been capped five times so far by Scotland. And tonight's evidence, you'd say, a few more caps in the offing. Chopra still chasing things down, the man whose goal is the difference so far. This is Solomon Taiwo. Taiwo's long ball, but it's just going to be into Dean Gherkin's arms. Yeah, he's got to do better than that, he's got an awful lot of time there, he can't just play that one forward to the goalkeeper, you're just going to slide that down the line in the channel, get the back four turned around and get your team pushed right up the pitch. Fontaine. Looking for a Kinde. Wouldn't quite sit down there for Nicky Maynard for Bristol City. Liam Fontaine. Now Danny Haynes. On this left-hand side late on Danny Haynes. Liam Fontaine. The centre-half's cross. Not a bad cross either. Here's Nicky Maynard. Tees up the strike. And the equaliser for Bristol City from Gavin Williams. In any time, the home team have levelled up the seven-side derby. Wow, what a great strike. 
Oh, you have to credit them. They haven't given up. And they, they haven't gone long ball over. They've tried to play the ball. What a fantastic strike that is. We just praised David Marge. I don't think he can do anything about this. Seems to bury itself in that corner. Good little setup, Haynes. Good awareness there. And just oh, 20 yards out. What a good strike. And just flies. A little bounce off the surface. We talked about how that might be likely. Maybe a little deflection on the way through as well. And nestles in that bottom corner to break the hearts of Dave Jones and Cardiff. And, I mean, Gary Johnson will be delighted, but he won't really relish the fixture in the replay. Gavin Williams' first goal since March ties the scores and maybe secures a replay. A week tonight in Cardiff, 1-1 in added time, but here come Cardiff again. Oh, Cardiff will be devastated. Dave Jones will be absolutely fuming. He's just talking away there with his assistant, but they should see the game out. It's funny how these things turn around. I talk about that poor ball, just went through to the goalkeeper, and that he ended up launching the ball, and that's what the goal came from there. The, the fine lines between closing games out, the professionalism to get yourself over the line, and now face a replay you really don't want. It's a Peter Whittingham Cardiff free kick to try and avoid the replay here. Whittingham's ball fizzed in, it's not the best ball, and it's headed away with relative ease by Bristol City, who will now pressure the ball late on. Marshall's clean sheet no longer intact. Here's Chopra again. It's Michael Chopra who will go for goal, but he will drag his shot well wide of Dean Gherkin's goal. Yeah, we've seen a few dread shots tonight. And good quality of game from Chopra. It's half a chance and a little bit naive from Bristol City. Still pouring forward, less themselves three on three at the back there. Chopra will be a little bit disappointed. Carey did well, stood up. Made him take the shot from 25 yards or so. It would have to be a good one to beat the goalkeeper from that from that angle. But you know, both teams really are going for it, aren't they? Well, we are now over the four minutes of added time. We'll play no more. Darren Deadman blows to end a stalemate inside Derby. Michael Chopra's wonderful lob gave Dave Jones' men the lead. But in added time, up popped Gavin Williams to score his first goal since March to book us a third round replay. A week tonight in Cardiff, it finishes honours even in the West Country. The full-time score in this FA Cup third-round tie then is Bristol City 1, Cardiff City 1.